Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible and turn to Isaiah chapter 49. This is the continuation of the Isaiah commentary series. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Okay, let's go. Verse 1, Isaiah 49. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people from far. What isles? Did you know that the New Testament was written in Greek? And Greek is a nation of many isles. And what nation, what island nation, gave us the Bible in English? England, the King James. So, is that one of, oh, listen, listen, O isles unto me, and hearken ye people from far? The Lord hath called me from the womb. From the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand hath he hid me and made me a polished shaft, in his quiver hath he hid me. You know, in Revelation 19 and verse 15, and out of his mouth, whose mouth? Christ. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. In Revelation 1 and verse 16, And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. All right, back to Isaiah 49, verse 3. And said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I said, I have labored in vain, I have spent my strength for naught and in vain, yet surely my judgment is with the Lord and my work with my God. And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him, though Israel be not gathered, Yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. And he said, Is it a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the preserved of Israel? I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. There's that word Gentile again. When you look up in the Hebrew, it's the word goyim, plural, or goy, singular. And the King James translators were not consistent in the way that they translated this word. Sometimes they translated it as nations, other times as Gentiles. So when God promised to make Abraham a father of many nations, it's the same word. I'll make you a father of many goyim. It's the same word that they translate as Gentiles. So keep that in mind. I don't consider it an error. Sometimes the Lord hides things for us to dig and seek out Sometimes he does that. All right, so let's read verse 6 again. And he says, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Thus saith the Lord, 
the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to whom, I'm sorry, to, to him whom man despiseth. Oh, yeah. In John 15 and verse 18, if the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. Verse 25. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law, they hated me without a cause. Let's go back to Isaiah 49 and verse 7. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to him whom man despiseth, to him whom the nation abhorreth. What does abhor? Hate in. It means to be hated. To a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise, princes also shall worship, because of the king that is faithful, and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. Thus saith the Lord, In an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee, and I will preserve thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth to cause to inherit the desolate heritages, that thou mayest say to the prisoners, Go forth to them that are in darkness, show yourselves. They shall feed in the ways, and their pastures shall be in all high places. They shall not hunger nor thirst. Now here's some end time prophecy, people. Verse 9 and 10, right? They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them, for he that hath mercy on them shall lead them, even by the springs of water shall he guide them. Is there a New Testament witness? Yes. Revelation 7 and verse 16. Well, let's take a look. I guess we'll go to... Let's do Revelation 7 and verse 14. Revelation 7, 14. And I said unto him, well, John's talking to an angel here. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, well, John had asked him, what are these that are arrayed in white robes? Or, or he was asking, John, you know, the angel's asking John, well, what's, what's, what's up with these white robes? That's, you know. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Revelation 21.6 and he said unto me, It is done, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Revelation twenty two seventeen, And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. All right, back to Isaiah 49, verse 10. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. For he that hath mercy on them shall lead them 
even by the springs of water shall he guide them. And I will make all my mountains away, and my highways shall be exalted. Verse 12. Behold, these shall come from far, and lo, these from the north and from the west, and these from the land of Shinnom. Sing, O heavens, be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord hath comforted his people, and will have mercy upon his afflicted. But Zion said, The Lord hath forsaken me, and my Lord hath forgotten me. So here it is, the people are saying that the Lord has forsaken them and forgotten all about them. But the Lord answers in verse 15. Can a woman forget her suckling child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. So the Lord says, yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Thy children shall make haste. Thy destroyers and they that made thee waste shall go forth of thee. Lift up thine eyes round about. Behold, all these gather themselves together and come to thee. As I live, saith the Lord, thou shalt surely clothe thee with them all as with an ornament, and bind them on thee as a bride doeth. For thy waste and thy desolate places and the land of thy destruction shall even now be too narrow by reason of the inhabitants, and they that swallow thee up shall be far away. The children which thou shalt have, after thou hast lost the other, shall say again in thine ears, The place is too straight for me. Give place to me that I may dwell. Then shalt thou say in mine, thine heart, Who hath begotten me these, seeing I have lost my children, and am desolate, a captive, and removing to and fro? And who hath brought up these? Behold, I was left alone. These, where had they been? Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up mine hand to the Gentiles, and set up my standard to the people, and they shall bring thy sons in their arms, and their daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. Is there a companion verse to this? Oh yeah. Turn to Revelation chapter 3. All right, let's go, let's see, Revelation 3 and verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, now, phileo is a Greek word, has reference to love. And uh, another one is agape. People say there's a difference between them, but you know what? I did a study on the two words, and it seems like they're pretty much interchangeable. I could be wrong. I don't know. I mean, you look up all the words where they're used, and I couldn't find a significant difference between the two of them but uh, Philadelphia basically is city of love or brotherly love but uh, our modern day Philadelphia is uh, very dark if you know what I mean and full of crime very dangerous city Verse 7, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true. He hath the key of David. He that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. Who has the key of David? Christ. Christ is the door. Right? He has the key to open the door, and he has the key to lock the door. 
Verse 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Verse 9. Here's the punchline. Here's a reference, companion verse. Behold, I will make them of the sin of Gog, of Satan, which say they are you know whose, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. Wow. I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem. So why a New Jerusalem? Because the old one is polluted. Uh, let's face it, people. The two witnesses that confront the false prophet uh, is in Jerusalem, which is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Where was Jesus crucified? Jerusalem. You know, uh, God tells you in that mystery Babylon killed the prophets. And Jesus said Jerusalem killed the prophets. God never sent the prophets to New York City or Mecca or Rome. No, the prophets were sent to Jerusalem. And they were the ones that killed the prophets because, well, they didn't like the message. You know, who wants to be told to repent of, you know, their wickedness? No, they don't want to hear that. You know, God's going to make, make his prof, uh, pr uh, prosperous, you know. God wants you healthy and wealthy and wise. And doesn't matter what you do, he loves you anyways. That's the modern gospel, and uh, that was the old ancient gospel to them. When Jesus came telling them to repent and believe on him, no, we want to do it our old our old way, you know. So, why the New Jerusalem? Because the old one's polluted. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name, Verse 13, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now just remember, verse 9, Behold, I will make them of the sin of Gog, of Satan, which say they are you know whose, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Isaiah 49, verse 23. And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee, and their face toward the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. Verse 24. Isaiah 49, 24. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captive delivered? But thus saith the Lord, Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contendeth with thee, and I will save thy children. And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood, 
as with sweet wine, and all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Just remember, in verse 16, the Lord says, Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Do you know the Lord has engraven Israel upon the palms of his hands? Think about that. All right, that's the end. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.